Hello, this is Monika Sommerhalter. In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about polyphenol oxidase and most of the information on polyphenol oxidase that you hear today is either from this journal article published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, and it's about polyphenol oxidase from apricot or from databases. So in this journal article, you see the amino acid sequence of polyphenol oxidase from apricot in figure number six. All proteins are made up of amino acids, and this polyphenol oxidase enzymes, enzyme has almost 600 amino acids. And all amino acids are displayed here as their one letter code. So at the N terminal end up here, you see a methionine abbreviated with M. And at the C terminal end, there is a serine abbreviated with S. This particular sequence is shaded according to three domains. At the N terminus, starting with methionine and ending here, at residue 101 or position 101, you have an alanine. This area here or domain would be the signal peptide used for trafficking, for delivering the enzyme in its final cellular localization. Then the green shaded area is the catalytic active domain followed by the C terminal domain in yellow. The C terminal domain is shielding the catalytically active domain. And as long as the C terminal shields the catalytic active domain, the enzyme is in its latent state. In the figure caption, you can see that this amino acid sequence of the PPO from apricot was deposited in a database, the Uniprot database, and here is the code. So if we enter this code into the search window right here for finding the sequence, you get to the following entry. So PPO from the apricot, also known as Prunos armeniaca. Since this um, PPO enzyme was characterized in detail, you can see the status of this entry is reviewed, so it's a high quality entry in this database. Let's have a look at the reaction that can be catalyzed by polyphenol oxidase. Here you see catechol, which is a polyphenolic compound. It has the benzene ring with two hydroxy groups. So 1,2-dihydroxybenzene would be an alternative name for catechol. It's the most, it's the simplest diphenolic compound. Since polyphenol oxidase is an oxidase, no surprise that oxygen oxidizes the catechol and you get the quinone. 1,2-benzoquinone could also be called orthoquinone for the positioning of the two carbonyl groups right here. And the oxygen itself is then reduced to water. Polyphenol oxidases can work with other substrates, not just catechol. For example, dopamine is the substrate that we are going to use in the class. In order to carry out that oxidation, a cofactor is needed. A cofactor is a non-amino acid component of the protein, and in this case, there are two copper ions embedded inside the protein. You can check out this entry in more detail on your own. I want to get to the subcellular localization. So here is a cartoon diagram of a plant cell. You had a video to look at about the components of a plant cell. And polyphenol oxidase is found, in most cases, inside the thylakoid lumen of the chloroplast. Many of the substrates, like catechol and other diphenolic, or sometimes also monophenolic, compounds are found in the vacuole. So as long as the cellular structure is still intact, as long as there's no bruising of the plant, the polyphenol oxidase cannot get to its substrates, and then you don't have the browning effect. 
in order to reach the chloroplast thylakoid lumen, the protein needs a transit peptide or signal peptide or sometimes called trafficking peptide. So it reaches the thylakoid lumen inside the chloroplast. So the first 101 amino acids, as you saw here in the sequence, are all used for the signaling. Proteins are synthesized at ribosomes. These ribosomes are in the cytosol or close to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and you saw that also in the video about the cell. So in order to get inside the lumen of the thylakoid inside the chloroplast, it's important to have that signaling peptide. Once the protein is trafficked, the signal peptide is cleaved to the protease, and you only have the catalytically active domain and the C-terminal domain. For polyphenol oxidase from apricot, there is no crystal structure, but there is a similar protein, another polyphenol oxidase with a structure. So here you see a crystal structure of apple PPO displayed in a ball model, in a space filling model. All the carbons are displayed in cyan, all the oxygens in red, all the nitrogens in blue, and the yellow dots that you see once in a while are from sulfur, like cysteine and methionine are amino acids with sulfur. Hydrogens are typically not displayed for protein X-ray structures. The signaling peptide is already removed. It was cleaved from apple PPO. Nevertheless, the protein still has a impressive size. We can also display a protein structure in a wire diagram. The two spheres that you see in the middle are the two copper ions. So the wire diagram allows us to locate the active site. Rather than looking at wires, you can also display proteins with ribbons to highlight secondary structure elements. The corkscrews displayed in red are alpha helices. They crisscross around the two copper ions, and you have several beta strands as well that form kind of a beta barrel structure at the side. Next, we zoom into the active site. The two copper ions displayed as these yellowish, yellowish spheres. They are surrounded by histidine with the one letter code H, and you have some phenylalanine rings around. Here, the ribbon diagram is color-coded by the N-terminal end in a dark violet color, and the C-terminal end has a warm red color. So this allows you to follow along the amino acid sequence. Here, the color coding was by domains, the catalytically active domain in green, terminal domain that shields the catalytically active domain is color-coded in yellow. If the C-terminal domain were removed through proteolysis or disturbed in its structural integrity with acidic pH or a detergent like sodium dodecyl sulfate, and then you would have an easier approach of substrates to that active site, which is located where the two copper ions are. Next, we have a look at a surface rendering. And the color coding of the surface is by polarity of the amino acids. In red, you have negatively charged amino acid side chains. That's glutamate and aspartate. In blue, lysine, but also arginine. The yellow color was for nonpolar amino acids, and the pinkish color was for unpolar but not charged amino acids. Here is an example of leucine highlighted in yellow as an aliphatic side chain. Here we have another look at the via diagram with the same color coding by polarity. In yellow are the 
non-polar, more hydrophobic amino acids. And you can see how those amino acids are mostly in the interior of the protein. The red and blue colors are more to the outside. So all the charged amino acids that are more water-soluble and hydrophilic, but also the polar uncharged ones in that pink color, you find them more on the outside, but the hydrophobic amino acids are more in the interior of a protein, with the exception of the histidine ligands that coordinate the two copper ions. With this overview of polyphenol oxidase, you got to know the protein that you'll be working with a little bit better, and I'll be seeing you for the next Zoom lecture. Have a good day.